Okay, so this is Business 342, the workbook lecture, pages number 83. You remember this from previous sections, the dividend growth model. This is how to, to price out, figure out the return on a stock. According to the constant growth model, we know that price at zero, price at year zero, equals dividend for period one minus the rate of growth R, in this case, for the equity, the, excuse me, the return R for equity minus the growth rate. There's the growth rate of the dividends in this case. We can rearrange the terms and solve for the cost of equity as the sum of the dividend yield. Remember the dividend yield is basically the dividend divided by the price. That's going to give you the dividend yield plus the growth rate. So RE, which is the, re the return for equity, goes over here. This part is the dividend yield, which is the dividend from year one over the price at year zero, plus the growth rate of the dividend. It says, uh, problem, suppose Dexter's stock sells for 21 bucks a share, and next year the dividend is expected to be $1. So this is P0, this is D1, Calculate the cost of equity if the market expects the dividends to grow at 7.2%. So the return for your equity, RE, equals dividend 1 divided by price at 0 plus, and remember they put the growth rate in a percentage rate, you know, is a decimal, excuse me, at this point because this is going to be a decimal and you're going to want to add these two together. You don't want this to be 7.2 and this be some 0.05 decimal and this will come out totally wrong. These both will come out as decimals, so you have to make sure you put the growth rate as a decimal, which is different than we were doing in some of the previous sections for the, uh, the percentage rate that we're using on some of the other models. But anyway, just remember that. These are both decimals, so you gotta make sure you put the growth rate as a decimal. And that came out to 12%. Okay, so there's pluses and minuses to that approach. It says, one is you got to have a dividend. If you don't have a dividend, you can't price it out with this model because this is zero over the price, right? So if they don't give you a dividend or if they don't give you a growth, well, you don't even need the growth rate because if the growth is zero, you can do it as perpetual a perpetuity, which is just the dividend divided by the price. And that'll tell you to you too. But you need a dividend. If you don't have a dividend, you're going to have to use the SLM approach. Although the approach is easy to use, it has several limitations. First, this approach only used for a dividend, only works for a dividend paying firm. Second is not applicable if the dividends aren't growing at a reasonably constant rate. So if they're changing constantly, then you can't use that either. And third, the historic growth rates may not be reliable to predict future growth rates for the dividends. Finally, it's not explicitly considered risk since risk is only indirectly accounted for by the use of the price. It does not explicitly consider risk. Okay, so the other approach is the SLM, Security Market Line Approach, which you learned in the last section, or the Capital Asset Pricing Model, I think that's called. I think the P stands for pricing. And the return on the equity, the, the return for the equity, not return on equity, that's ROE, the return E, which is return equity, depends on having the risk-free rate, RF, return for risk-free rate, the expected market risk premium, now remember, don't conf get confused. The market risk premium is this whole part of the equation, which is the expected return of the market, E, R, M, minus the risk-free rate. Don't get that confused. Not expected market risk premium is not just this part right here. It's this whole section. So if they give you the expected market risk premium, you put that percentage, that number, in substitute for all of this. If they only give you the market risk, excuse me, the return for the market, that's this portion right here. This is return on the market, just the expected return on the market, ERM. This isn't risk premium, this is the expected return. So say you were expecting a return for the market overall of 10% and the risk-free rate is 7% then the expected market risk premium is 7%. It'd be the 10% for the expected return for the market minus the risk-free rate. Remember, this is saying the expected market risk premium is how much you're getting paid above the market, for, I mean, the risk-free rate. 
that's the premium amount, which is subtracting these two. It's the market rate mar minus the risk-free rate. Okay, one of their problems, they give you this, they give you the expected market risk premium, which substitutes in for this whole part of the equation. Okay, the amount of systematic risk is measured by beta. So remember, this gives you the expected market risk premium, this section right here. You take this, so that's the market risk premium, multiply it times the beta. The beta applies to a particular stock. And then you add the risk-free rate, and that gives you the return you can expect on an individual security I, or in this case for the equity E. Okay? So if they give you beta, and if they give you the risk-free rate, and if they give you either the market risk premium, which is this whole thing, or they give you the expected market rate, which this should have a bracket right there, then you take, if they give you the expected market rate, you would take that, put it in here, and subtract the risk uh, free premium, the risk free rate. Okay, I said that wrong, the risk free rate, RF. If they give you the expected market risk premium, you substitute that for this whole amount, because that's the premium above the risk free rate that it takes to get the market return, expected market return. Okay, so problem. Suppose your company has a beta of 1.8 which goes right here, and the current risk-free rate is 1.1. Risk-free rate goes here and here. If the expected market risk premium is 8.6%, what is the cost of equity? Okay, so now they gave you the whole portion, the expected market risk premium, with substitute for this whole thing right here. And see how they did it? There's the risk-free rate plus beta, they put beta over here times that. You can do it either way. I like to put it on the other side. It doesn't really matter. You do multiplication before you do addition. So there's the risk-free rate plus the beta times the market risk premium, which substitutes for this whole section. And that's 11.25%. Okay, so that's page 83 of the, the Business 342 workbook lecture.